Hey, it's Cam again with another self-portrait. Here, just a different approach from the previous video. This one will be in colour, and I'll be approaching it very similar to how I would approach an oil painting. So starting with a toned canvas, and then being quite um, specific about colours that I lay down, and very, being very thick. So this is how I usually begin an oil painting. I have a toned canvas like this and then I use a bit of a darker variation of that colour to do a basic block in. So you could call this I guess an underpainting. And the background that I'm using is a canvas of my own that I actually scanned in. So you can try all these different techniques, there may be traditional qualities that you like and you can easily um, mimic those in the digital realm. So just be smart about it, play around with different brush settings and you'll find different things that work. Before, before I began this video I was playing around with a few brushes and their settings and so I was keen to try them out. So the drawing is quite rough, but I am trying to get everything in the right place, get the proportions right. And indicating roughly where the tone is. So I have a bit more interesting lighting set up than the previous video also. I've got a little table lamp next to me and it's shining on my jumper. I'm wearing a red jumper. I was wearing a red jumper and so it's giving off a lot of bounce light, a, a red bounce light. And you'll notice a lot of the time when you see, especially if you're doing a warm light, you'll have cool shadows and then vice versa. If it's a cool light, you'll have warm shadows. And often, oftentimes, the, the shadow or the cool part might look bluer. So the funny thing is, I, I just use grey and it looks really blue in the shadows. So when something when something seems cooler, it might just be a less saturated version of the local color. Yeah, and the local color here is, I guess, a red. Also, got a cool book in the in the mail today. I got Sargent's um, drawings, cool book. Anyway, <laughs> it's on another topic, but yeah, I picked that up for like five bucks. It's really cool. Uh, that, that inspired me to make some brushes that look like charcoal. If you see that brush that I used on the right section, it has a paper texture to it. So if you if, if you find paper textures that you really like, you can easily scan those in and then create a pattern out of them and then use them in the brush settings to create different textures. Um, you'll also notice you can't actually see the brush. Um, that was a problem with the recording software. It, it didn't export the um, cursor settings, but not to worry. You can kind of see what's happening. But I'm laying down the paint quite opaquely. So, um, thinking more about blobs of color rather than trying to blend everything too much at this stage because when you have a good amount of colors down and you know thick blobs you'll be able to then color pick and blend those and it, it generally looks better it generally has a better read if you think more about the colors and values being in different shapes different forms
Um, the end result of this becomes quite loose, um, but whether you're painting really tight or loose, it's a matter of time really. So if I wanted to make this photo real, I'll just spend more time on it blending and putting in more details. But I only spend an hour on it and I just want to make it have a, um, I guess, an expressive kind of painterly quality to it. So I use about three different brushes throughout the process. I'm using one brush that looks kind of like a watercolour brush um, using the wet edges, um, wet edges setting in the brush settings. Another brush I'm using uh, is, I actually use a couple of the CS5 brushes. Um, I, I never really use them for painting, but I, I figured they must have something good about them, so um, two of the brushes that I'm using throughout this process are modified brushes um, that come with CS5. They have um, a different engine to the previous versions, so it has interesting tilt functionality and things like that. So. I went in and customized a couple of those, added some texture and played around with the settings to get the quality that I wanted and was quite happy with the result. So there's a, there's a lot of color picking, uh, color picking at the start um, and then once you have a good amount of colors down, you can just use the eyedropper a lot and blend and pick colors just off the canvas rather than using the color picker. So yeah, cheating a little bit using the levels, but it's about making a good painting, right? I often find that. I find that I need to use the levels filter. I don't know if it's a crutch, but sometimes my, my values are too close to yellow. Just need to bring a bit more contrast in with the levels sometimes. But it is getting, it did start to get darker outside, so that was one of the reasons. Uh, when I started painting, it was, um, the sun was just going down, so it was still quite a bit of light coming through. And then, just over the course of half an hour, it got really dark. So just some finishing touches now. And yeah, just really try these yourself. Think about those warm, cool relationships. And um, yeah, just painting from life is going to teach you tons about color and all this stuff. And it's heaps of fun. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you, you, what you can create yourself. So thanks for watching and check out more videos to come.